This is Frankie Lynch, Saturn Girl. Please, please, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Please also comment below if you have anything interesting to say because it really helps out the algorithm. And I want to know what you think. So anyway, this is the first video in a series we're doing on synastry aspects. We're going to look at specific aspects between planets in relationship astrology, specifically synastry. For those of you who don't remember, synastry is where we take two different people's natal charts and see how they interact or compare. That means we'll look at how one person's planets aspect another's and what houses they fall into in the other person's chart. So let's take a look, shall we? The first aspect, the one for this video, is Saturn making trines or sextiles to Venus. Okay. Well, number one. So when we do synastry, me in particular, I tend to use the modern or psychological perspective on astrology, which means that the chart becomes a representation of your inner nature, of your psychological nature. So each of the planets or points would be interior parts of yourself. So, for example, Mercury would be how we think, speak, and express, whereas in Traditional astrology, it might be a person. So the traditional perspective is that planets and houses represent very literal people, places, and things. So um, we need both. We need to interpret both ways because external things factor into relationships as does individual and personal psychology. So we need both interpretations and we need it holistically. You see... Relationships are like a psychological collision. We crash into each other and push buttons in the other person that we didn't even know we had. <clears throat> Excuse me. When looking at specific synastry aspects, we will think of one person embodied in one planet and the other person embodied in the other. And we'll look at specific examples of that. So, you know, just an example here. If my Venus is square, someone else's Jupiter, I am the Venus person. They are the Jupiter person. Okay, so let's get into Saturn Venus here. So, <clears throat> well, what's Saturn? So, in our psychological interpretation here, Saturn can be restraint, delays, control, expectations, rules, boundaries, melancholy, and our solitary nature or isolation. Having Saturn aspects in synastry isn't necessarily a bad thing. It binds things together. <laughs> it makes things last longer. So it can add up to longevity in a relationship. It's good to see um, good Saturn aspects in long-term relationships. But it can also be frustrating if the relationship isn't serving you and you really want to leave. It's hard to break that up. Well, how about Venus? In this context, Venus is how we relate to other people, not just romantically. It's relating in general. It's our social nature. She is our social nature. Love, desire, our aesthetic, what we like, our tastes in music or art, clothing. It's the things we like, how we like to dress. Attraction, what we're attracted to. How we love and how we want to be loved. So <clears throat> what can we expect to see when we see these two planets together in a trine or a sextile? Well, trines are probably the most positive, not probably, they are the most positive aspect. They are in the nature of Jupiter, while sextiles are the next most positive aspect. They are in the nature of Venus. So you could think of a sextile as like sort of a weaker trine. It's also a harmonious aspect, just less powerful or potent. So that means we see a potential harmonizing between the Saturn person's expectations, and the way the Venus person needs to be loved. 
So this often can mean that the Saturn person is giving the Venus person the sense of security or consistency that they may desire. There's a sense of safety coming from the Saturn person. You know, perhaps it's not always feeling safe in the circumstances that you're in with the person, but you feel the person is protective and that you may be protected from external obstacles, challenges, or dangers by being with that person, which is one of the reasons it can make it so difficult to leave because the stability is very compelling. But this also means that Venus makes Saturn feel more attractive and helps them enjoy themselves. <clears throat> you see, oftentimes when these two come together in a trine, the Venus person really wants that consistency and stability. And the Saturn person really wants that attractiveness and that pleasure and the fun because that's what Venus rules. She's our attraction. She's also pleasure and fun. And oftentimes she can prompt Saturn to be more spontaneous, to be more enjoyable or to enjoy pleasure. Whereas Saturn can prompt Venus to be more consistent, another good word, to be more stable, to be a bit more disciplined, and to follow through with things. So now, like I was saying, this aspect can be great for longevity, especially in marriages. I mean, I had this in my marriage. You see, um, it can indicate that rules, duties, and routines are core facets of the relationship. I know that sounds sort of maybe boring or uncomfortable, but this can be really important too for a couple in creating a sort of environment that's conducive to, again, consistency. Gosh, I got to stop repeating all these words, but staying together, having harmony, understanding, and shared responsibility. If we can't get things done, we sort of fall into fantasy and things fall apart, including ourselves. But this isn't an all good transit. Like I said, I had this in a previous marriage, actually in several relationships. The downside is the Saturn person can get cold. The Venus person can feel a lack of warmth and understanding. While Saturn, on the other hand, can get depressed isolated, suspicious, and jealous. Oftentimes, Saturn will try and control Venus because they're scared to lose her. And then Venus will feel smothered and suppressed and she'll start to back away. Now, <clears throat> the jealousy. With the jealousy, Saturn often thinks that Venus is looking for someone else. Sometimes she is because of feeling stifled. But a lot of times she isn't. And Saturn has this, this fear and suspicion that comes from a sense of insecurity. Saturn might make Venus feel secure, but he has an issue making himself feel secure oftentimes. So that's where the jealousy comes in. This really takes great communication in order to get over, right? Because if we just let these things fester and don't talk about it, then we have all these weird ideas that just sort of gain speed and momentum in our silly minds, right? <clears throat> now, Venus may enjoy stability, but she will need fun and spontaneity. So Saturn does need to compromise on that. Whereas Saturn may like the excitement that Venus brings, but Saturn also needs space and he needs consistency. It's a compromise. All relationships are. But there's a line within the compromise that we need to hold. And that's called what? A boundary. It's more important to be yourself than to be with anyone else. So remember, it's great to compromise. As long as both sides are compromising and are sincere in their desire to be honest and loving together. Otherwise, this will devolve into one person being trapped and the other person being the trapper. <clears throat> Excuse me. So 
How do I conclude this? I say this is mostly a good aspect. I like seeing this in synastry. I like seeing this between two people. But you can't cherry pick aspects either. You have to look at the whole chart and how everything interacts to get a whole picture and to really understand the dynamics that are going on here because it's very nuanced and people are complicated and how we react and respond to each other is especially complicated. So <clears throat> again, we would have to examine other aspects to get a better idea. You know, I mean, for example, I had this in my marriage. We were together for a long time, you know, for years. But some of these things, these trappings did happen. The coldness, the overemphasis on routine, where the spontaneity dry, you know, dries up and dies out. The jealousy, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, just be aware. Even the trines, when it happens with the malefic, they have their difficult expressions. So trines and sextiles aren't all hunky dory Plus, when you have an overabundance of trines and sextiles, it can also indicate a relationship that's not going anywhere. Because you need friction. You need a little bit of conflict for growth. And we continually have to fall in love with each other over and over again because we change as people. And if you weren't changing, you'd be in trouble because it would mean you're not doing anything. So anyway, I hope this was informational, fun, and helpful maybe for you. <clears throat> and remember, any aspect can work between two people as long as both people sincerely want it to and sincerely care about each other and sincerely want the relationship to work. So anyway, please like, please subscribe, please comment. I want to know if you've had this aspect in your life and if I'm, you know, close on my description with it. So anyway, I love you so much and have a wonderful whatever you're having. Okay. Transmission.